Check, check, check one, check two. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. Can you see the... Yes. Okay. Yep, perfect. Perfect. So what I like to start with is to, first of all, show a little bit of astronomy, not astrology. Um, this is the um, online web-based um, application. It's also available on mobile. It's not mine. It's stellarium-web.org. Anybody can access that. Anybody can have a look at the night sky. So why do I do that? Because then it explains really, really nicely the whole hoax of Western astrology. Hmm. which is what most of us know. So you probably would have known that you are uh, being born on the 9th of um, February. You probably been told many times that you're an Aquarius, right? Uh, your mm -hmm. sun, uh, the sun position in Aquarius. Well, what I did is I plugged in your birth data into this software, which is showing us the, the real picture of the sky at the moment, whatever whatever time you pick. And here is your birth data, the time, etc. And look what's happening. This is the position of the sun. Hmm. Sun is in Capricorn. It's not entered Aquarius yet. Hmm. So, Interesting. So, so this is the result of something called precession of equinoxes. The fact that the, the sky from our perspective is moving, is sort of the, the, the whole, the whole constellation belt is moving. It's moving very slowly. It's moving about one degree every 72 years. So it's very, very slow. However, the positions that we know, such as you're born with sun in Aquarius, as per Western astrology, these positions were correct 2000 years ago. Hmm. So what the Western astrology, the tropical zodiac, what it did, it froze the positions 2000 years ago. It froze the zodiac. So why are we pretending something that's not the case? And of course, you get the you know you you get the the elites, you get the Illuminati, you get the um, Freemasons. They're not using um, tropical astrology because it's a hoax. They're using this. They're using the true ancient astrology back from the way they intended in the ancient times when they were observing the sky. So the reason I'm showing it is because majority of people are not even aware of that. They are blindly following Western astrology. They bought into this whole idea of, um, yes, we have the fixed um, seasons and, you know, the, 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 uh, the time of, let's say, Aries starts at the spring equinox, etc. And that's like this every year. Well, that's not correct. This is a hoax that started 2000 years ago. We bought into that, just like a lot of other things we bought into. So people need to push through the cognitive dissonance and, and open up to, to, to what, what is truly happening in the sky, because this is what the ancients did. They went so, when, so when people are using the, um, the astrology attributes, um, they're not using the right sign, but did they change those attributes to be accurate to your birth date? Like, like I'm an Aquarius. No, uh, they're, they're not. They, they're not. They're they didn't not, change anything. No, they they've not changed the um they've not changed the attributes. The this this uh, whole hoax is is well. First of all, this whole notion of astrology based on the sun sign, as in I'm Aquarius, I'm Libra, I am Gemini, etc. This has as much to do with astrology as McDonald's with fine cuisine. So mm. this is not astrology. This is a newspaper entertainment, as I call it. Gotcha. This is not astrology. Your chart is much more complicated and contains many more things, out of which the sun, quite frankly, not so important, not so big. There is much more other things that are truly significant, and they convey much more uh, information rather than the position of the sun.
So, okay. so you see, this is also where astrology gets this really bad reputation because if you want to literally um, <laughs> reduce it to that um, uh, McDonald's size, right, and quality, well, this is the result. Not only you're looking at the wrong position, but you're looking at a very, very limited um, uh, amount of information, which most of the time is incorrect. The only reason why it resonates to a degree is because we are a blend of the whole chart. So yes, there will be some kind of elements of Aquarius. The, the reason why you're feeling Aquarius is actually not because of the sun position, because the sun is not even there. The, the reason why you're feeling Aquarius is because your 11th house, this is where you have your so-called K2. And the moon, this is house position, not the sign position. And 11th house belongs to Aquarius, but we will get to that so that you don't get confused what I'm talking about. Okay. So I, I will show you the chart in a minute. But um, so so you see the ancients, they would have gone outside. They would have been looking at the sky. When someone was born, they would have been looking what planets are visible, what stars, what stars are on the eastern horizon, western horizon, what stars are, you know, uh, culminating. And they would build the, the picture of the sky based on that. This is how astrology was built. Western astrology does not do that. Western astrology is we're playing astrology on a computer, which is ripped from the reality of what's really happening um, out there in the sky. So this is why you were told that your sun is in Aquarius when it's not. It's in Capricorn. Okay. So then I can jump back and show you. Let me show you first this one. This is your chart, and this one, the this is the easy one or the one that that you can use. Um, uh, it's available for everybody. So you see, out here, we have the zodiac signs. Twelve zodiac signs because the matrix uses twelve. The thirteen, including the Ophiuchus, which is this big debate: what happened with the thirteenth sign? Yes, but not in the matrix. 13 is a feminine number. <laughs> what we have in the matrix is not feminine principle. It's a masculine. It's not even a masculine. It's a patriarchal, distorted masculine principle that reduced the zodiac to 12. This is why we're using 12. Um, what we have here, those squares, we have a superimposed Vedic astrology. Vedic astrology, um, uh, lunar mansions. Just gives me a little bit more flavor. So this is my little um, chart to cover the Vedic astrology because the usual Vedic astrology chart is, is quite um, different and nobody understands what's going on. On the other screen, I have Babylonian and I will show you that um, uh, in a minute. However, you see, this is now where the sun lands at the end of Capricorn just as you saw it in the sky. And the same with all the other planets. They are distributed as per their true placement. And now just one more thing, because there is something called true sidereal astrology, which is based on the exact sizes of constellations, but that is not exactly what the matrix seems to be using either. So I'm using equal houses. You see, everything has 30 degrees, even though that's not really the case out in the sky. So what I what I like to do, and there's a lot really to talk about here. I, I've made some notes so that I don't forget to tell you the good meaty stuff. Um, the what I what I like to start with are the the big three, which is what everybody talks about, which is the ascendant position, the moon, and the sun. So what do they what do they tell us? The ascendant is literally the eastern horizon. The constellation that was rising on the eastern horizon when you were born. Why is that important? Because they say in the esoteric astrology, this is how the, the soul incarnates into the body. So the soul is coming in, imprinting certain information or carrying an Im imprint of certain information about your life. By the way, the mechanics of it. This is where I go against what all the astrologers say. 
it is not that you incarnate and this is such an amazing evolutionary tool for you to overcome your limitations. No, you're coming in, whether you are coming in from the reincarnation cycle or whether you coming in from the outside, meaning from the outside of the feminine, from the outside world, whether you coming in as a soul who wants to come in, they do not have a right to refuse. However, you play by their rules because this is their, their playground. So they will read you. The controllers of the matrix read the signature like an imprint of the soul. Who are you? Where are you coming from? What you coming here to do? Um, what's your what's your specialty? What's your talent? Um, how can you mess up <laughs> for them? How can you mess up their plans? So then, yes. what they do, they will um, make sure that on top of what you obviously inherently bring as the soul you are, they will incarnate you into certain conditions, certain family, certain circumstances, and life situations, etc to basically block some of those um, abilities, talents from fully maturing and, and showing themselves up here. And so that most of us, right? And, and for some of it is the whole life. Most of the people live this life literally like running like a rat on a, or a hamster on a treadmill without ever realizing anything. Most of the time living in their traumas, living, you know, going through the same scenarios from childhood whether that be some kind of abuse or whatever that starts to dictate their whole life the same type of experiences the same misery the same issues i'm not saying that everyone's life is bad of course it must be a little bit good at the bad because we would have um we, we wouldn't have the will and drive to play their game however it is what you get it is it is literally the fact that we can see this is a symbolic mathematical representation of the code that has been partially imposed onto you by the controllers and partially it represents what you're bringing on the soul level. Cool. So it it's like, a, it becomes the manual. It becomes like a cheat sheet for what is what the hell is going on here, mm -hmm. right? Is this what woke you up to, to seeing the differences between the, the I think you said, uh, the tropical versus the, the Vedic? Is that what woke well, you up personally? Like, the, did you see I, those? I, I think that more what woke me up to, 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 to the whole fact was, you know, my background is engineering, right? I, I, I used to um, work in oil and gas, not, not in finance. <laughs> I used to work with production. So I'm very, very into the kind of thinking function, analyzing, et cetera, critical thinking. And what I know- What company did you work for? Pardon? What company did you work for? I work for um, Centrica, that's in the UK. So that's the um, UK main uh, oil and gas, or I would say energy company, because they mostly on the downstream. So the, the, the British gas, etc. they own British gas. So I used to work in the UK. Then I moved to Norway. I, I worked for, um, again, for them, because that was like a transfer within the same company. Then I worked for Statoil. Uh, right now it's it's called Equinor. So that's the Norwegian um, uh, national oil and gas company, the biggest one of the biggest companies um, in oil and gas. So so I, I work for I worked for both of those for many years. I, I was in oil and gas for Jesus about 12 years, something like that. My first job out of uh, my first real job out of college was working for uh, BP. Right. So I was in operational um management with with bp so that was interesting i've heard you say oil and gas before i yeah. meant to ask you before but yeah so cool. so i i my background is a petroleum production engineer so i i i was uh, just like you i was working in operations i i got to a point of um you know managing offshore production for um especially here in norway uh so yeah similar similar stuff um but but I don't think that's what you've been doing um, because that's not exactly what you that's not what your chart is saying. So I don't think you've been that's, that's you spent a I've long time there. The past. Yeah, I've run my own business for the past uh, like eight or nine years now. Okay, but don't don't tell me. Don't, don't tell oh, me. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, okay I mean, don't, don't yeah, tell I'm me. Getting, getting, I'm getting you off track. I apologize. Go ahead, do your thing. No, 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 no. It's not that you're getting me off track. I just don't want to tell you things, and then you're gonna tell me, "Oh, you tell me that because I told you that, right?" Yeah. So no, I won't believe that. I, 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 I can, 
I'm a very good judge of character and, and I, I think aura is the wrong word, but like the, the essence of someone, I can tell very quickly uh, if someone yeah. is full of it or or they are following their right. their intuition. Right, right. So so you see the, 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 the funny thing with this chart, not just with this chart, but with astrology, when you actually get to that, when you when you cut through the bullshit of you know the layers which layers of bullshit and this 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 matrix kind of um misinterpretations we're we're drowning in it so so including astrology when you when you rip through those layers there's a lot of things that you can find in a chart that this is not my intuition that's guiding me to tell you what i think you're doing or i think you're not doing it's literally written here so um it's it's just a question of literally m mathematical interpretation, right? So um, the uh, where were we? We were talking about oil and gas, and uh, I asked you uh, what was it that woke you up? You were telling me you were an engineer. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. What woke me, well what woke me up was that you see I think that most of the people who start looking into astrology they probably go into astrology through that tropical path. So did I. And then you, you know, you're kind of into that and you come across the sidereal, the ancient astrology, the, the Vedic, the Babylonian, and the zodiac changes. So, you know, suddenly you're you're told that half of your positions change, right? Or most of them actually change. So so if you were like I just told you, right? You were told all your life your sun is in um, Aquarius. Now you're being told, no, 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 it's in Capricorn. You would have been told that your, I don't know, Uranus is in Scorpio. And now I'm telling you, no, 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 it's in Libra, et cetera, et cetera. Same with, um, with your other planets, the moon, the moon in Gemini, no, 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 it's in Taurus. So, you know, I don't understand as an engineer two plus two cannot be four for me and seven for you mm -hmm. it's you know it's quite it's black and white we cannot have we cannot be looking at some mathematical interpretation and getting two different results and being okay with that because right. Because there's a lot of the, a lot of um discussion out there about those two astrologies and people basically say oh you know you just have to choose what works better for you <laughs> no you can't no what, what sort of what, what is that so i went from this angle and i knew that you know it cannot be that the sun is either in scorpio or it's in libra choose whatever you prefer well it's either there or there you know right. so i started going down that path and this is what really led me to dig into that ancient side of things, into the, the true positions of the of the zodiac, into actually looking at the sky. The problem with majority of astrologers today is that they do not look at the sky, they look at the computer. Hmm. And the computer will show you whatever you want to see. It's just because the computer will calculate something and tell you that the sun is in um, Aquarius, that doesn't mean that that's the case um, in the real sky. Okay. Yeah. So why are we pretending the sun is somewhere where it's not? Hmm. Well, because nobody is actually doing it the way the ancients used to do it. And nobody understands, well, not nobody, but many people who do astrology, they don't even understand what they're looking at. They don't understand they're looking at the code, the code of the matrix. Well, they're like, That's they're, what they're they're like a doctor. They're a doctor reading a medical book. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. just regurgitating what, what's been told to them and that's how they get their license. Exactly, exactly. So so why are we pretending that, you know, this position is such or such, and then there's obviously this whole um, notion of explanation around um, tropical astrology? Well, of course, there must be some to cover up a hoax, right? I mean, come on. So, so this is what woke me up, you know, the fact that I'm an engineer woke me up, the fact that I do not accept that it's one or the other, whichever you feel like today. Mm -hmm. So, so this is this is pretty much where where I I uh, the, the sort of the you path. Drew the line. You, yeah. you drew the line. Yeah, you drew the line in the sand and said no. Yeah, yes, and and I know that you have a lot of the same policies um, of that critical thinking and basically not accepting any bullshit because because it's a lot of those things. Very analytical, critical thinking, analytical mind processing information. Probably very much. Um, well, there's a lot of sales. Um, flavor here and you know working with something on the commercial or trading or something like that but still using your mind a lot 
Um, so, so probably you are very, very capable of detecting nonsense and not entertaining. It's uh, just, just you know, you know what I'm talking about. I think so. Yeah. So, okay. So why did I mention the ascendant? And of course, the ascendant in that kind of traditional way of looking at astrology is the uh, is to do even with the way we look and uh, how we how we are perceived. That's all great. However, in that grander scale, the ascendant, the sign on the ascendant, describes that broad area on the broad level that you are here to investigate that you will be naturally led your experiences will be taking you there to um practice some of those behaviors etc so for you the ascendant is in cancer and nakshatra called pushya that's the vedic astrology so cancer naturally is someone who is very caring very nurturing, somebody who um, wants to make sure that others are okay. But in Pushya, we have one more um, additional flavor. We also have the Saturn here. And the Saturn is one of those that doesn't take any bullshit. Um, but Pushya gives it a bit of more of a flavor of someone who is very understanding, quite empathic, can easily sort of tune in to the other person and 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 kind of um, empathize or understand the other person. Um, so here we can have people who could be like mentors or some kind of consultants, um, business coaches, etc. Um, mm, there's that element because you know how to work with people. But mind you, that does not, your chart is leaning towards a direction of definitely leadership. This is somebody who needs to take charge and you in this life are going to be working a lot with that leadership, um, running something of your own and being the guy sort of at the forefront. However, we're talking about that kind of leadership, which is not the dictatorship, but we're talking about someone who has a lot of empathy. So you would make other people feel good around you. And this is part of the part of your sort of um, task. It's almost that kind of heartfelt leadership, if that makes sense. So so it's not like, you know, this is how it's going to be. You just do it. But it's it's very inclusive and it's very understanding towards other people very much that kind of mentor um you know somebody who can uh work with a team make them feel good um there is a bit of teaching involved here a bit of sort of like a mentorship or um if if that if that makes sense that uh, leading guiding people but but not not in that dictator type of way but more like being very very um supportive to them and then we have this saturn sitting on the ascendant and that saturn is is you see it kind of um almost in some way It almost, I wouldn't say it spoils this flavor, but it kind of challenges it a little bit. It gives it additional, um, that kind of demanding side of you or the one that's very, um, it is business-like and it is quite serious and responsible. It even can take you down the path of being um, a perfectionist. So quite high demands of yourself, quite high demands of people around you, but probably even higher of yourself. So, so people that are quite hard on, on uh, themselves. There is also a flavor of that old soul here that comes with Saturn. This is, this is part of why you can read other people and say, okay, this is, you know, this is legit. And this is, no, 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 this is somebody trying to sell me something here you you might have here a tendency to be, be a bit of a fixer as in fixing other people's um problems or just having a pro feeling like you need to have a solution for um in in every situation so so that kind of stepping into um uh, that responsibility here assuming responsibility even when it's not yours mm -hmm. that could be also a bit of a tendency here this position could also in some way delay some things. You might feel like you kind of take two steps forward and one step back. So 
bit of a late bloomer and late bloomer that that might mean that that you might be a bit delayed by the time you're ready to step into that true purpose of your life it tends to happen a little bit later than earlier um and you see people with with um pro quite profound saturn in the chart they um uh, astrologers talk about something called the saturn complex and it is to do with the kind of behaviors that Saturn might drive you towards, such as what we what we mentioned, this um, perfectionism, or um, there might be there might be an element of you know wanting to prove yourself to someone, perhaps that can come from childhood, or whether that would have been you know some parental figure or um, somebody that left you feeling like you have to prove yourself you have to prove your worth you have to be overly ambitious or you you end up being um, very ambitious and really driven really kind of pushing to almost like prove to someone something right and the, the reason why it's called the Saturn complex or a, a trick that Saturn plays is because Ultimately, as you go through life, you will learn or you will see, not really learn, but you will see that there is really no, that that that, that never works, that there is no ever reward, reward coming from the fact of being the best, of proving yourself. Um, do, do, do you know what I mean? Does that? Oh, say... absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So, so ultimately, the trick that Saturn plays here is... Or in let's put it the other way, not the trick that Saturn tries to play. The way to outsmart this energy, the way to push through this energy, because you don't want to do this. This is exhausting. This is unnecessary. And this is why it's called a trick of Saturn, because doing it and acting like that ultimately is not bringing the reward. So why are we doing it, right? But it is subconscious. It, it, it lands in that subconscious. This is one of the ways that the Matrix would have tried to stop trying. you. Exactly. So, so what to do? Well, the ultimately the, the 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 way to work with it, deal with it, is of course that you have to realize that this is clearly not working. But it is it is that kind of love for yourself. It is not needing to prove anything to anyone. It is, you know, that that kind of realization that. I don't have to prove anything to my parents or to whoever, who, you know, whoever I'm trying so desperately to be so perfect for. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. I'm good enough. It, I'm good it was myself, but I, I've, uh, I've yeah. since uh, taken a, a mantra. So we'll talk about that later, I guess. Sure. I, I don't want to, I don't want to rain on your, on your forecast. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I, I don't mind. I don't mind you obviously commenting on, on, on those things. Um. So, so, it's, but you're right. You're you're a hundred percent right so far. And there's I think there's almost two levels to my life so far, and maybe there's another one coming or another two. Right. Um, but uh, there was the perfectionist. Uh, it wasn't trying to prove um, necessarily to someone. It was more like uh, leaving a mark for myself. Like it was like I had to step into my own shoes. Yeah. Um, but since uh, a few years ago. Um, that doesn't lead to happiness. Yeah. And uh, when you go inside, uh, you, you realize that um, those things that you, you thought you wanted, um, those are not important at all to you looking exactly. back upon them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so overall, you see this Saturn, it, it's just to be mindful that this energy sitting here on your ascendant, it is going to try to give you the impression that you have to try harder than you have to, that you have to strive for something, that things earned with hard work are the only way. That's not true. That's not true. Yeah, so do not. You're, do you're, not... You're... Oh, absolutely. So my mantra uh, is uh, surrender, seek truth and let go. Exactly. And those, are, those are things that are telling me to, to not be manipulated. Um, by by external uh, surroundings and, and exactly. environment. Exactly. So so you see, it's a shame that it takes us so many years, right? <laughs> Before yep. we yep. figure some of the stuff out. No, not a, not a, not a shame. I don't look at it like that. Everything is for a reason. In 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 my okay. um, in my ideology, that when you learn something, there are no mistakes. You either sure. learn from them or you succeed in, in your goal. Sure. Uh, so so that is the that broad broad area that you are um going to be in this life sort of naturally directed into 
And this again, it is part of this matrix, okay, trying to navigate you into certain into certain direction. Um, but of course, we know that most of mo most of us, this is not our first rodeo. This is not the first time either incarnating or not the first time on Earth. So, what is that past? What is the um, that past context? What, what are we bringing here? Well, that past context, so literally the equivalent of the ascendant, but looking at the at the past context, is the position of the moon. So ultimately, the moon becomes um, the moon represents our some talent, something that we would have done in the past life. It is not exactly the the focus for this life. But it does represent some qualities, some talents, some skills that can be used in, in this life. Of our essence. Yeah, yeah. So so for you, the, the moon is sitting in Taurus. And we have Nakshatra Rohini here. And Rohini, um, this area is talking about somebody who's charismatic, who's charming who's able to kind of have that nice flow and influence with other people um uh, naturally creative there's a lot of creativity in rohini and self-expression there will be that kind of need for some kind of self-expression even artistic abilities so quite a lot of people in the in the in the taurus kind of area they either are doing something literally creative like arts or music or or dance or what, what not or uh, Rohini is also very much around um, the money. So there will be some kind of money aspect. People that, well, obviously, you know, we, we can be spiritual, but money is not, is not something that we, that, 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 that we are going to deny ourselves, right? So, so, so there is a gift, you know, around, around money, around going into projects and things that, that can be successful here so so that's a that's a good thing it gives you that kind of sense of literally picking what would be the right thing and what maybe you know what to steer away from mm, any anything artistic that you that you're drawn towards or uh yeah i used to write songs in poetry Oh, you write songs in poetry okay so so the the artistic side of things okay i will show you in a bit you're not exactly done with it just because it's showing up here in the moon but it will also show up in the purpose of this incarnation okay. so i wouldn't cut yourself off from writing those things we will get to that what i also like to see because the moon is the the key component of this reincarnation machine and the this mechanism controlling this matrix it is the ancients knew it it's 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 coded into all the mythologies legends etc so the what the moon tells us is very very important so i also look at the position of the moon in relation to the sun which is nothing else as the moon face so you are born you see the moon is ahead of the sun the planets move this way so the moon is ahead of the sun the sun is here and in this position it is that first quarter moon so it's the moon when you kind of see only half of it so what does that mean well this first quarter moon we we sort of um, look at it in the context of um, um nature the the cycle of the nature so the first quarter moon corresponds to the spring equinox what happens at spring equinox in nature well, this is the time when obviously the seeds would have been planted long time ago in the winter and in the spring or that first day of spring. Um, well, the plant is starting to, or the seed, right? The, the roots are coming out of it. It's starting to push up um, to, to create some kind of structure to create the support for the flower. So we need to translate that onto your life, overall, overall life experience. This is on a grand, grand scale. So you know, you know, you're, you know you're coming on to our, uh, we're having this discussion the day after the spring, spring equinox, the 22nd. Oh yeah, of that's, course. Yeah. That's when you're coming, that's when you're coming on. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're the first day of the spring equinox. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, interesting, interesting, isn't it? Yes. So, but you see, the the interesting thing about this um, moon is, or the time, the timing of spring, is that the, the theme here is crisis and action. Why? Because this is that moment where the plant needs to really push to start making it above the ground, right? To start soon, maybe in May, coming out and starting to blossom later in June, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the crisis, and of course the crisis is caused by the square aspect between the moon and the sun. So it's, the square is 90 degrees, so it's around the square aspect. How it translates onto you as a theme in your life, there will be um, a feeling of experiencing quite serious um, amounts of crisis in life overall. Not crisis as in bad experiences need to happen, but there will be something that you feel like you kind of pushing against, like you may not fully be aware what, what what is going on, why why things are not always so smooth, why am I, you know, why, why do why does it need to be so much resistance in, in, in some of the things that I'm doing? Also remember that as long as the plant is underground, there is no visibility here. So a lot should be uh, dealt with more intuitively, not just by thinking for you because the thinking function is also very strong it is all it is also almost like half half you have a very high um ability to process the information and to critically think etc cetera, etc cetera, analyze however do not ever abandon the intuition the intuitive side because actually the way you're born that intuition is here to lead you in the right direction so Overall, this whole crisis, this whole reason for the crisis, this whole reason for those for those pressures and and difficulties, is to um, become the kind of take charge personality. And and you would have through those experiences through your life, you would have gotten to a point of naturally taking charge, being someone who is here to break the old structures push through the old and bring some new quality to kind of a bit of a, at the forefront, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Make way for new things. This is that overall quality. Um, there could be, um, you know, personally or in your life, there could be situations where you have to make tough decisions, choose between things that are, could be shifting your life quite significantly um quite quite uncomfortable circumstances but this is the flavor the flavor comes from literally the plants um you know at, at the spring equinox trying to push up against the the soil right to at some point in the next few months come out on the on the surface so this is the flavor you're pushing you need to push and this is part it's written into your experience that's just that's where it's coming from okay uh so we have that moon and then we have the the sun and the sun is in the eighth house so here we have that element of um occult interest the esoteric interest etc however it is still in capricorn danishta nakshatra in capricorn capricorn is business in the matrix, Capricorn is business. These are people that, you know, very often work in some kind of corporate environment, maybe some kind of organization, or at least their own business, where there is an element of taking charge, being the leader. This is leadership. Danishta, well, Danishta is, is, is um, you know, authority, some kind of material accomplishment. So again, um, playing it back onto the moon, right? Here we have some resources and interest in that in that material side of things, or we are aware of that being also part of the um, part of the game here. Here with the sun, well, this is what you this is making it happen. Um, so so this is also dictating the fact that 
there is that kind of natural ambition here, um, being determined, wanting to, to, to push through. These are not people to be working behind the scenes, you know, in some as part of the team, not really being visible. Here, this is leadership. This is someone who's going to want to take charge, want to be in some kind of um, position of authority, um, managing something, managing a team underneath him, something, something of that flavor. So that comes from the sun and the moon so back maybe i'll take you back here see here is the sun here is mercury and something very interesting is um regarding that position of mercury for you why because Mercury, from our perspective, is the first planet. Is the planet the closest to the sun, okay? And, and it doesn't really matter whether we are living on a flat Earth or not. It's whatever the interpretation, the Mercury stays very close to the sun. It stays so close to the sun most of the time that it's invisible. Because, of course, sun is shining so strongly that when, the, when Mercury, from our perspective, is close to the sun, we cannot see it. Mm -hmm. So... It only happens about 15% of the time that Mercury moves outside far enough away from the sun so that we can see it, which is, which is called the elongation, so the, 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 the distance from the sun. And you happen to be born almost, almost, it's, it's, it is a few degrees away, but it's almost maximum elongation very important position of mercury in relation to the sun and this is where we would normally jump to the babylonian astrology because being born with visible mercury is very significant only 15 percent, about 15 percent of the world population is born with visible mercury which maybe <laughs> explains why so many people have no idea what's going on because Mercury is that thinking function, its ability to critically think, process information, put the things together, and not just the thinking, it is also that intuition that goes beyond. So when uh, that Mercury is very close to the sun, we say that it cannot really fully operate independently. The sun is, you know, it's like being around the king. So you're too close to the king, you cannot shine because the king is here, right? Mm -hmm. So so with your position, Mercury is so-called morning star. It it shows up before the sunset, uh, before the sunrise. Or you can still see it before the before mm -hmm. the uh, sunrise. So in this position, when it's as a morning star, it shows up as the mythological Apollo. Apollo, the god of the sun, god of the light. So in this position, we're talking about illumination. So the mind, Mercury, the mind aspect, operates not only as a function of that thinking but there is this illumination that comes in meaning you need to really really tune in to that intuition to that voice within because you are very likely with this position to be literally able to be it's like you're getting some kind of higher power guidance trying to speak through you if that makes sense so it will give you insights. It will give you the ability to connect the dots, not from, not just from, you know, reading through thousands of books and then, oh yeah, now I found out something. No, it's like that kind of insight that you just know. Illumination. Very, very important position. Very useful to know, because if you ever doubt yourself, if you think like, nah, I'm not a medium, I'm not a psychic, I, nah, I, you know, I haven't read that, so I, I don't think I am able to know that. Well, you, you actually are. You have that ability to, to have that insight illumination. So it kind of comes to you, not just as a result of thinking, but of some kind of, um, I don't know, download, let's call it, call it this way.
do you think that that is on a a separate notion do you think that that is something that um comes from lack of a better term the moon or is that something from um like higher selves or is it basically is it coming from the an yeah, i know point, what you mean yeah. or is it coming from an internal like essence point of view i'm, I'm going to email you something really quick um and uh if you can look at it if you've ever seen this um please let me know um, you want me to see it now yeah i'm not uh yeah it's okay if you see it now it, it's nothing crazy it's just a symbol that i don't know where it came from uh but okay. it appeared to me in the in the past like month um, and I, uh, I don't know if it came from me or if it's completely something that was, to, I mean, it was for me for sure, but I don't know what the symbol is. Um, and if you've ever seen it before. Should be sent. Yeah, I, I got it. I'm just looking okay, at it. Okay. I mean, the, <laughs> the, the, for me, the, you know, my natural kind of, uh, uh, the way I see it, and if you've seen my logo, you, it's a very similar symbol to what, what's in my logo. Um, I have the logo, it looks like the sun, but there is more to it um, because I have the uh, spiral in, in, the, in the middle, the, the vortex. So I don't, well, I, I cannot interpret, I don't know what, what, where the symbol comes from, but it looks quite similar to a sun symbol, but uh, the sun is a portal. The sun is not what people think it is. So, so that you see in the middle, there is nothing here. I, in my logo, you have the the spiral. So, it may well be the the sun, and it's quite interesting because I'm talking to you about Mercury being, you know, Apollo the sun. So, <laughs> you showing me the sun symbol. Well, it's you know, it's it's up to you to obviously. To me, this very much feels like something connected to the sun um and the sun mind you not just okay sun and what sun is a portal the, the, the there is a connection to different stars or suns um alkion uh sirius is also these are so it's a system of stars and through alkion connection into the galactic center so this is a um these are portals these are literally gateways that are interconnected Gotcha. Okay. Um, let me let me go back. Uh, I here. Yeah. So, wh where is it coming from? Is it coming from the moon? Um, definitely, a lot is coming from the moon. But it is the. Uh, you see, they try very hard to program us and to control us, but the. What's coming from the moon will be the type of mind control, will be the type of things that is ultimately making you limited. It's limiting you. It's telling you, you cannot do this. You cannot do that. Mm -hmm. It's deterministic. That's why astrology, astrology is nothing positive. The only reason I'm doing astrology is because it's their code. So if we want to decode their code, well, you got to know astrology, but not because it's amazing way to predict your life. Mm -hmm. So this is why I don't do predictive astrology, because then I'm just, I'm just, you know, uh, linking to their little um, deterministic model and telling you what's going to happen for you, taking away your power, your creativity altogether. So, so I would say that the insights that we are getting, and I know what you mean. You mean, how do we know that it's not mind control, right? How do we know that when I'm being shown this symbol, it's legit rather than it's what they want me to see and jump on the bandwagon of something that's ultimately a dead end. Right. Well, this is this is what you kind of have to um, feel out Figure for out for yourself in a in a way because i know that a lot of people are out there in that new age they would swear by the fact that they are getting you know that they're, they're getting guided right they're getting guided by by something no they're getting misled 
not guided. But mm -hmm. I do believe that there are people who are genuinely guided into something. And if there is any element that something is trying to predict a negative outcome or tell you that something bad is going to happen, that's coming from the matrix. That's coming from the matrix. Because yeah, I, don't, I don't believe in that part. Yeah. Exactly. So if there is something that tries to predict doom and gloom, that's not coming from, that's not your guidance. That's coming, that's the matrix plan. That's not our plan. But, you know, if, if something is showing you, okay, go after it. Look, look where it takes you. If it takes you into, you know, something that tries to determine you or tell you that you need to do this and you need to do that, that smells to me. But if it's something that, you know, takes you down the path of discovering something, why not? Or meeting someone else that's, you know, helpful. Mm -hmm. Why not? There are definitely things in your chart that are not in yours, in everybody's. Some things here come from the soul. So this is the voice of the soul and other things are the voice of the matrix. Mm -hmm. The que I can give you the themes of what is what, but the, you know, it's as simple as anything that tries to limit you, anything that's uh, connected to the trauma, fears, limitations etc any themes uh, repeating in your life which are not uplifting and inspiring that's not coming from the soul that's coming from the matrix that's so fake, fine. fake fake karma is not synchronicities of course of karma are you kidding me yeah. <laughs> you know karma is the concept for the east and right, we have yeah. the sin right so the, the west has the sin you are a bad person you're gonna go to hell so so that's that's the same concept um, so I would say that if something is uplifting, if it's literally, you know, blows the air into your fire, well, it must be, it, it must be positive, but if it is in some way scaring you or, you know, some doom and gloom scenarios, I, I wouldn't, that, that, that's why I'm really, really worried about those people. So many people are going into this oh, we're going to have, you know, reset in 2024, in 2027 or whatever. We're going to have this. We're going to, I know all about the reset. Don't mm -hmm. Mind you, it's not about that. But all those scenarios, oh, we're going to have a flood. Oh, we're going to have an explosion. Oh, we're going to have this and that. That's what they want you to think because they right. cannot create. So someone needs to create it. And when yep. people start mm -hmm. dwelling on it and literally bringing it into reality by the fact of accepting it as a yes it's going to happen look at me i found out from the uef agenda great well yeah. what are you doing what are you doing you're bringing it as a given into this reality that was that, that's very profound i'd like to explore that eventually what you just said they can't create it so they propagate the fear that so someone else can create it that, that's, exactly. that's very profound but that's that's because they do not have the ability to create because they're not connected to the source. So mm -hmm. they need someone. It's like a computer. Computer cannot create, but the computer can lead you to believe into something that then you are going to create. Mm -hmm. And then here we are. Well, this is this is an element of alchemy that I would normally go into, but that's 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 a big big uh, discussion here. But yeah. Um, Definitely, this this suggests that you have that let's say channel open for something more, and 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 very very probable that the fact that you are aware, you know what's going on, is the result of this position. I'm not saying that it's as simple as that. That people with invisible mercury are all asleep, and and the other ones are all awakened. No, I've seen both, but. Definitely, it gives you that um, ability to, um, well, to connect to something out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mercury in this position also becomes your so-called planet of oriental appearance. This is also the, um, uh, the, the ancient techniques. Planet of Oriental Appearance is talking about that kind of skill, original skill, talent that you have, like really something that you can utilize. And again, here we have Mercury. So it talks about that very strong um, processing information, abilities, communication, very, very strong here. Um, uh, prefer uh, to, normally those people prefer to work 
as their own boss rather than have someone micromanage them and tell them what to do. Um, Mercury connected to the e-commerce, trade, some commercial communications, uh, marketing, things like that, design maybe. But also there is that element of inner guidance, intuitive, um, connecting to that. So, so with this position and especially with the context that I just told you, you bridge naturally you bridge that intuitive part with the um that analytical part uh so ability to 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 question certain things because you see there is a lot of those people that are kind of oh i'm all intuitive but they cannot put the two and two together right because they have to, yeah they cannot process information you bridge both uh, and then this part, this place, you see, it's a, it's a kind of bold line here. This is called Midheaven. So it's literally, it's like the Zenith. So this is the highest point um, in the sky when you were born. And as it happens, at that highest point, we have Jupiter, almost. So that's interesting. Uh, and we are in Pisces and Revati. So Jupiter, whenever a planet is very close to a significant point, so you see here you have the this Saturn um, on the ascendant. Here we have Jupiter on the midheaven. So both of those planets are going to give you flavor, their own flavor into your life. And specifically Jupiter is going to give that outer persona, that kind of public contribution flavor. And having uh, Jupiter there, well, it makes you someone who is interested in the welfare of other people. But we're talking on the grand scale. I'm not saying that you're interested in your neighbor's welfare. I'm talking mm -hmm. about doing something for a for larger humanity. pardon for for humanity. Exactly. For exactly. So so we're kind of operating on the collective um level here. Uh there is generosity here. Um, it talks about career, which in some way serves other people, leads others, brings them hope for a better future. And this is why I said, when you told me that you were working at um, uh, in oil and gas at the beginning, I don't really see this oil and gas here. I don't even, th there is something to do with this mercury. There is also something to do here with maybe sales or trade or communications or some kind of marketing and stuff like that. That's not the highest calling either. Um, I would say that you might have been acting like a boss or you, you might have been, you know, you might have led a company which would have been part of the path to develop certain skills here. However, on that higher expression, there is something here and Saturn might have delayed it a little bit. I would say that you're stepping into now with the with the channel and probably something even more. I think this is just the beginning. If, if that's all you do, I don't know what you do, but there is definitely an element of more <sighs> that kind of leadership, but for humanity meaning a bit outside of the corporate world you know it's it's if if you know what i mean so probably having a channel like now you now you started with with the other people um it is more doing something in that kind of service to the collective but i think this is not yet where you're gonna take it we're gonna get we're gonna get to that that Jupiter in this position, it's actually quite useful because it gives you that um, interest or natural natural inclination to be recognized in the field of if you were to teach about something to do with maybe organization, the law. Um, nobody's gonna be playing the mar you know the, the the their law, but maybe the. Uh, uh, you know the what's 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 called the, the the natural law, right? Maybe those kind of topics, something where you are serving the collective, serving the humanity. Pisces very much on the service to other people, mm, going beyond the self. Here we are working for others. Welfare of society is is high on the agenda here. And finally, um, let's get down to well, what is the purpose of this incarnation there? That's on this axis here. You see, we have those symbols. 
And those symbols are more representative of what the soul wants. And here we have that interesting direction, 11, 5. You see number 11, this is the house. And here you can't see the five, but four, six, so five is in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you're coming from the house 11 into the house five, into Vishaka, Libra. Libra is about very often that's also this commerce stuff, maybe marketing, PR, stuff like that, you know, dealing with other people. But also um, the sign here suggests that in this life, you are literally to bring other people into the picture. So because you see the, the fifth house overall is about some kind of creativity, some kind of creative leadership, that leadership from the heart um, could be also artistic, doing something artistic. But when we have Libra here on top of that, so, so we have both, right? Thanks. We have the fifth house, but in Libra. It says that, yes, you are to take charge, you are to lead. However, you are always to include other people in the picture. So, so it is not, again, that kind of, I am the dictator, I'm going to show you how it is. It is not exactly the rock star on the stage, because that's also leadership, right? Fifth, fifth house is the house, if the very artistic house, but also house of creativity very often people on the stage, whether that be public speakers or whether that be um, uh, artists performing, that's also the stage. But here, when we have Libra, it kind of means more like you are to make sure that you bring the other people, the other person is in that kind of almost center stage. So yes, take the leadership, but do not turn your back onto the people. So here on this axis, we have um, someone who is coming. You see, 11th house is house of that collective, being one of the people, which means you probably naturally have that um, ability to... Uh, influence other people to maybe have big network or maybe have contacts maybe pick up a phone get someone to it's it's somebody who's coming from the house of already knowing how to create networks but in this life you need to operate in the fifth house which is the house of leo it belongs to leo it for you, it is in Libra, but that's just because of how you were born. But mm -hmm. the house overall belongs to Leo. Leo is the leader. So it is somebody who needs to come from the crowd and lead the crowd. So when I try to explain this position, I give the, um, have you watched Spartacus? <laughs> uh, long time ago, but yes, yeah. Or maybe the series, Spartacus series. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's literally as simple as here you have a guy, right, who was one of the sort of common people, right? And he steps up and he um, runs or uh, starts to lead this whole uh, uprising. That is the flavor here. So nice. you are to take charge. And the fact that you would have been taking leadership roles in the corporate world part of this preparation, the fact that you would have been in some kind of way, always feeling like you have to take responsibility, take charge, part of the preparation, making you into, into where you are going here. But this is also a house of that creativity and self-expression. This is why when you told me that you, uh, there is that artistic side of you, right? Some writing, some texts and, and, and poetry, I wouldn't step away from that because it's it seems to be able to still really really flourish for you. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll get to one more one more thing. So you're you're really coming as your resource. You're bringing the ability to connect to other people, 
and maybe even that kind of cosmic consciousness because here we have the house of aquarius so we have that natural um ability to um do something for the collective to for you to be thinking about other people thinking about some group endeavors thinking about the collective not just me however the point is to step in front of the crowd now and lead be the pioneer, be the one who inspires, be the one who gives vision. I'm not telling you that you have to become a president or you have to, you know, but it is that kind of flavor of literally inspiring others. So you've been part of the crowd, but now it's time to, okay, lead the crowd. What you're going to offer? Fifth house is also house of um, ancient wisdom, ancient knowledge knowledge of the ancestors this is where the ancient texts are uh so so if you are interested in that or if you're interested in that kind of ancient knowledge and, and by the sound of it you are it is also part of your like this is this would be also good as a destination this would be also good thing to to look into fifth house house of children so um people with this position they um, well, they might even have multiple children. Sometimes those children come uh, even, you know, from different relationships. So, so here we are experiencing the children as well. But just, just so you kind of understand the the context here, especially that your other um, indicators shows something that may be challenging for relationships. The 511 axis, it is, I call it the axis of um, potentially challenges in relationships. Because you see, the 11th house is that house when you were detached, when you were a bit disconnected from that kind of romance and the relationships and stuff like that. Like you were focused on, this is like the Prometheus. I'm going to mm -hmm. save the humanity. I'm going to work there that's where you're coming from so in this life you're stepping into like a new territory now i am to take a responsible role as some kind of leader i am supposed to be perhaps um more available for slightly different things that kind of heartfelt leadership which can also um be realized in relationships but it is a bit of a new territory so sometimes it's a bit of a bumpy ride here could be you know, few relationships before things settle down. Um, very often here, people have, you know, children with multiple people. That's just, that's just what happens here. Uh, and you see, the, the thing is with this energy, that it is not just as simple as, oh, I'll just make certain decisions and it's going to be okay. Well, it's almost like it's ingrained in us like a um, quantum computer. So other people, they pick up on our code without asking questions. So if somebody feels, okay, here is Rahu in the fifth house. So I better give him the experiences of Rahu in the fifth house. If you know what I mean. So, mm -hmm. so we do not have that full control here that oh but i don't want to be having that kind of life i want stability i want simple i don't ever want to go through this or that these are quite mm -hmm. heavy forces so just be mindful of if that makes any sense yeah yeah uh Okay, and the fifth house also, it's a house of that, you know, it is the house of Leo, and Leo is the Leo. So there must be an element of that self presentation to the world, self promotion, um, stepping into that personal power. So you're stepping out of being invisible in the crowd or being, you know, a guy that, well, you were just like one of many you really need to step outside, right? That's what I'm talking about. Step in front of the crowd. So it is okay here. And it is part of your experience to seek out that honor, status, leadership, some kind of significance through your actions. It's nothing negative, not for you, not in this experience. Um, it is, it is 
also something that will be naturally supported, which means that you see, like I say, it is a quantum computer in everyone's head. So people pick up, uh-huh, he has that Rahu in the fifth house. It is part of his purpose. So people will kind of buy into um, what you're trying to do when you're in alignment with that energy. Just ask me if something doesn't make sense because maybe it, it doesn't. No, it, it does. I mean, I, I, I feel, like I said before, I feel the pull to kind of, step out of my comfort zone for, for different reasons. Um, it, and, but it's not a personal reason. It's, it's more of a, yeah. a, you know, like a collective reason and a, a pattern breaking reason. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And you see, by the way, this element, this, this little symbol here, it's called part of fortune, uh, comes from again, Babylonian astrology. Um, and this one is sitting also in that Libra and in the fifth house. This part of fortune, it kind of represents the pot of gold. It says what ultimately really brings you happiness. Where is that, you know, where where does the rainbow end and you find the pot of gold, right, in this life mm -hmm. for you? So that kind of flavor of what is it that you really like to be doing. And it's really nice because it fully aligns with that um purpose of the incarnation look it's right in the same place so we're talking about some kind of developing creative self-expression going in the direction diplomacy tacked with others because we have that libra here so so that is definitely something for you uh fifth house also house of the stage uh, for example angelina jolie a lot of actors have that access Rahu in the fifth house, um, meaning it will naturally support some kind of performances, some kind of, you know, whether you like, like you say, you you write um, text or music, that would be supported here. If you were ever to show up on a stage and speak to people, that would be supported. If you were ever to show up yourself like you are, um, it is supported. So in the fifth house, it is supported. On top of that, what helps, this is slightly different chart. You see the number changed. It says D10. Um, it's so-called karmic chart. And we know about karma. We don't like, we don't do karma. However, matrix does. Matrix tries to still put its claws into you, right? So certain things will still be kind of felt or they will still try to play out. And here I am also interested in this Rahu, the, pur the purpose that you will naturally be guided into. And you see this Rahu here is sitting in the first house. And the first house is house of self. So you actually have two houses or in both charts, the emphasis is on you showing, presenting yourself to the world. Interesting. So the first house, house of self, which also means that there is an element of literally, you need to deliver, you need to show what, who are you? What do you stand for? Who, what, what, what is the, what is the quality that you are bringing here? There is something creative here. We are in Taurus. So back to what you were saying about those texts, I, I wouldn't be surprised that you, if you don't really go down that path and, and do something more with it, because it seems that if you do, there is really a potential of quite significant success there. Um, you need to hear with this first house, because it is the house of self, the first step is to gain confidence in your own abilities. So you're coming from the, you see, it's always 180 degrees away from each other. So this is where you're coming from. This is where you're heading to. So coming from the seventh house means that in the past, you would have been putting a lot of emphasis on other people. So other people as in, you would have been very mindful of what are their opinions and maybe approval and maybe, you know, making sure that they are happy. But actually in this life, this is not the purpose. You should, this is going to slow you down. This is going to limit you. So in this life, you're building courage to stand up and say, 
this is who I am and I'm gonna do my thing and I'm not gonna ask uh, you know I'm not gonna change for anyone and I'm not gonna ask for anyone's approval if this is okay that I'm gonna do this this is this is what ultimately is going to to help you get there and, and and make that impact so there's an element of standing up for yourself following your own decisions your own judgments even if it's controversial even if it's not you know even if you feel like the whole family or the whole group of friends is telling me otherwise you need to be able to feel what you want and go after that um taking initiative being an inspiration to other people this is the first house it's the house of self but the good news with Rahu in the first house is that it is naturally um supported that if you do those things there will be a payout there will be a success so so this is not some kind of self-aggrandizement you know oh i'm just gonna do it and nothing's gonna come out i'm gonna make a fool out of myself no it's actually this time around you got the cards to shine you got the cards to literally show yourself bring some quality and show it to people uh here there is also um in order for you to fully step into this position you need to let go of that kind of feeling that you need to keep peace and harmony with other people so you need to make everybody happy because you're not going to make everybody happy there will be people that might think that why are you leaving this job that you were doing and now you're doing this crazy stuff or whatever now you know it it but this is part of the this is part of this experience that you need to know that you are choosing your own path here and with this position it is somebody who is a pioneer in something somebody who is the first at or the only one at something you are to be the inspiration you are to be the way shower here it comes a bit with a cost because here you see it's a house of self well the best unfortunately the best way to work the self is by doing it yourself alone so it might be that people might be removed from your life or you might find out that when you do corporations it doesn't work that well it might mean that you have to go solo it might mean that you will not be feeling like you're getting much support from other people as in if you're doing corporations you might be feeling like you're picking up the slack or that you are the, the main driving force anyway it might also mean that in some situation when shit hits the fun you can only count on yourself because this is the placement of experiencing yourself meaning through the thick and thin hmm. experiencing yourself that's interesting uh okay and then let's get back here uh let's have a look at this chiron you see it chiron is very important because it's this k with the hole down there um looks like a key and that's what it is it's a key to the chart in the chart chiron represents that wound that would have happened at some point um most of the time it comes from childhood it can also come from past lives and it just kind of gets carried on but even if it does then it would have been in some way um amplified or it would have just played out in childhood anyway and then it would be on repeat like autopilot so this is something that really really would be good to unlock and overcome so that it doesn't quietly you know in the background okay. run your life run the show so for you that chiron is sitting in the 10th house and in pisces and what it means is that this is part of this perfectionism this is part where that perfectionism and that kind of need to push and 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 uh, uh prove yourself this is where it kind of sits that there might be also a need because overall 10th house is to do with that 
recognition, public recognition. So there might be something around wanting to be acknowledged, wanting to be recognized, wanting to be appreciated. Um, uh, there could be something around, um, you know, whether that's back to childhood, the parents or friends or something where you may be, um, may, do, may not gotten the recognition for some accomplishments, or maybe you didn't really feel like something was, you know, nothing was ever good enough. Um, so, so there is that kind of theme here. Could be also identifying with the underdog a lot, trying to help people, trying to save people, trying to, um, you know, jump in and find solutions for, for people, even when it doesn't seem like those people are ready for solutions. So that kind of stuff is sitting here. And you see, it's very close also to that midheaven. So that's quite interesting. Because in a way, that want is trying to superimpose itself onto how you are going to present yourself in the world. So just be mindful of that perfectionism and, and that kind of um, need for recognition, not, not, maybe not need for recognition because it stems from the fact that um, there was something with like accomplishments that somebody didn't really maybe appreciate you. So, so don't ever feel that you're not good enough because if you don't receive someone else's recognition Pleasant. or yeah appreciation this is another matrix program trap. here trap yeah yeah which is kind of grabbing your self-esteem here you don't you don't need that uh, this is this is not real you know this is not something that's real this is something that the matrix is trying to keep you small don't need that here. Uh, so let me show you one more thing here. Ah, by the way, uh, let me show you something else first. So I asked you about your name. Uh, and this is what you gave me. And I, I put it into the Chaldean um, uh, calculator. And you show up with 73. Very interesting because you see, I always, uh, so, so this is the Chaldean um, numerology calculation, 73, right? All your, all your letters, etc. 73. So I'm looking at the 73. We have seven, we have three. Seven is that metaphysical, spiritual side. So definitely, because you see, what is this? This is what you logged into this matrix. We think that our parents choose the name or we choose the name or whoever chooses the name. Nothing is an accident, right? So this is part of your code, just like astrology. It's just that it's different symbols. Astrology, numerology always talk together. So even whether it's numerology from the date or from the name, never accidents here. So we have that seven, we have that three. The three for Jupiter and the seven for K2. We have the metaphysical meets the teaching, that kind of element of someone who wants to do good for the, you know, have that kind of effect on wider um, uh, collective. And the seven, metaphysical. But when you put that together, we get 10 reduction to one. We have the leader. We have the pioneer, you see, back to that fifth house, the Leo, number one, house of the sun, ruled by the by the sun, number one is the sun. But what I do as well is I go and look at the matrix alchemy. So I take your 73 from that Chaldean numerology, and I look at... Royal Society of Chemistry, the periodic table. Why? Because this is deep matrix. Nothing here is an accident. Mm -hmm. um, we think it is, it's not. Uh, the, the fact that the numbers, you see, there's always numbers, everywhere numbers. Nothing is an accident. So I look for that 73 as the atomic number. It's here. So there's an element linked with that, tantalum. 73, okay? origin of the name the name is derived from legendary greek figure king tantalus okay so you can do it offline if you like i can just 
give you a few um, lines about who he was because none of it is an accident, okay? Your name translates into a signature of someone called Tantalus, which is a mythological figure. It's a king, supposedly, it depends on the myth. Sometimes he is portrayed as the son of Zeus. Sometimes uh, it's just one of those that used to be invited to, to eat with the gods. Um, however, well, he uh, he did what he did. He did some bad things for the gods, so some transgressions on his part. He was supposedly trying to steal the um, the, the nectar, the ambrosia. Um, other legends say that he fed um, uh, human meat to to the gods to see if they can really are they really gods? Are they really able to see that they are? you know, are they really able to sense and do they have those abilities? So, and 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 in the end, he got punished by the gods. He was sent to um, uh, to the um, Tartarus and, you know, for eternity. The point is, here we have a figure that was doing something against the gods. The gods didn't like it, punished him. He was trying to be sly, or that's the story, but you see, the stories are always written by the victors, not by the losers. So who knows what really happened? For sure, what we know is that he did something against the gods. And the gods are whom? Well, the gods are the archons. The gods are the ones who created this construct. So in your signature, as you coming in here, is written the fact that you, by the virtue of your past, or by who you are, what you're operating at in this life, have some kind of signature, have some kind of ability to defy the gods, defy the matrix, to do something again. You, you have some knowledge with you, or you will come across some knowledge, or you will discover something, or you will take certain actions which ultimately are against the matrix. I've been trying to hack the matrix for a couple of years now. <laughs> but but you see, the thing is that a lot of people are talking about it. No, not everybody will no, be able it. to crack it. Yeah, not everybody even knows what to do with it. Some can, some will, and some have that in their numerological signature. And you have that. So just to make it clear why, going back here, you have a lot of those leadership. I keep saying there is a leadership, there is an authority, there is a pioneering, there is first at something, there is the only one at something flavor, right? So I'm just trying to make you see that there is a, a well, a task, a job, a mission, whatever you want to call it, a calling, a vocation that is here up for grabs for you written into your code, which, like I say, some of those things are coming from the matrix, but some are not. The things that I read to you about your calling vocation, this Rahu Ketu that does not come from the matrix. This, you see, these Rahu Ketu are the demons in Vedic, uh, Vedic mythology. The demons, the Asuras, were against the gods. So you see, this is why they have a very bad reputation. And in Vedic astrology, if you study the regular Vedic astrology, you will be told that Rahu Ketu positions are to do with our desires that we cannot control. So we should steer mm. away from that. Well, if that's what we are told, then it means it's the opposite. We should flip right, it. Right, we should right. go right into it. This is why I'm saying there are things here on the chart which are operating outside of the matrix or they are not part of the code. And, and most of them are. So what I'm trying to decipher for you is the fact that you do carry something, a signature information about you, which says you have the potential to defy the gods, to go against the gods and to really, really mess something up for them. And here you have in your chart about taking some leadership role and some self-expression here into fifth house, doing something, bringing some new quality back here into this chart into the first house something that has the potential to bring you fame i'm not saying that fame is our main goal of goal. course it's not however for people with rahu in the first house or on that 511 axis fame is a natural byproduct. product if not fame then at least 
being recognized in some way, some level of um, success. But when, when you pursue what you feel, what you really want to do, when you overcome the fact that someone may try to maybe, you know, tell you to no, 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 don't do that, play small, play safe, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you when, feel like that's, what, what do you feel like your role is on, on this incarnation? Do you feel like it is to um, decipher the codes? Is that what you, for people to? to I mean, I, I, I know what my code is. I know my, let me go back here. Because, uh, because I, I, I've had, and I wrote this about a week and a half ago, I wrote a little, a little thing that was on my mind about um, predeterminism versus uh, free will. And actually I've been, as I'm looking at this, I'm kind of getting a little deja vu because I, I think it was my um, my predestined alignment to to get this um, from someone. I don't know if it was from you, but uh, the the phrase that I've had in my brain or in in my subconscious since I was very young was it's written in the stars. Okay, and, and that's and I wrote. Yeah. Something about that about a week and a half ago, um, about the things that I that I was programmed to believe that at a very young age I have memories of me not believing those programs. Yeah. And, and examples of things like that. That that I was like, you know, this is it, it it's it's not a predetermined life necessarily, but that I, I'm supposed to remember this phrase written in the stars. But and you see, you're, you're, it, you're kind it of is, unlocking that for me. But it is spot on what you're saying. Written in the stars, if you look into normal astrology, they will tell you that astrology is this, you know, it describes all those great, uh, bigger forces that are in some way affecting us. No, it doesn't. Okay. It should have been originally, but since we have the construct above us, this, this AI construct, that's not what's happening. It's written in the stars. It is a deterministic thing. Mm -hmm. So you are, this is what I'm saying. Do not, do not like um, try to listen to those um, kind of insights that you, that you get, right? Which is, which is spot on because you're feeling instinctively something is off here, right? It's written yeah. in the stars as in astrology is nothing positive. Astrology is just a code of the matrix. It is for us to decipher. And the fact that things are deterministic is not a good thing because either we are this infinite creators, parts of some source, universe, whatever you want to call it. So why are we why are we not living the life that we really want? Why are but we I think I think for me, I don't I'm not disagreeing what your uh your frame is telling you, but for me, the written in the stars part is almost like a, a code for me to remember who I am. Mm. Like like this is the code okay. that I'm supposed to follow, and right. not that not as a predestined actions. It's like it's like align with this, be true to yourself. This is who you're meant to be. This is who you are. And for me, that 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 looking at this and and hearing you talk about this is is like it's confirmation of a synchronistic um, right. like message. And the message is synchronistic. Again, for me, that's positive. Um, you know, it, the the predestined part may not be a positive connotation, but for me, it is it is an essence yeah. of of who I am and and who I I'm looking for clues of which direction to be the most um, uh, humanitarian that I can. The my yeah. in, in real estate, you would say it's the it's the um, the highest and best uh, version of yourself, right? Or the, you know, highest and best. Um, and so that for me is a lot is helping me to confirm synchronistically that it's unlocking some of the the things that maybe I, I've been you know Saturn's been pushing me to to the negative or to the matrix part but it, but for me it's like look up like this yeah. is where this is what you need to be doing you yeah know, and, and to follow that path and and like I say you see those two things since we're talking it's written in the stars well those two things are not coming from the matrix they mm -hmm. are mathematical Codes. symbols of yeah. what the soul is trying to tell you if we were to ever get that voice of the soul translated into mathematical symbols and then deciphered well that is it 
So, so you see, like I say, some of those things here, they are limiting and deterministic. And these are the planets. We don't deal with the, I mean, we, we hear what they have to say, but we don't go into that. The point is to follow or to see, to, to see that what I'm talking to you about this position really resonates. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it is coming from the soul, not from the matrix. These are the only things here that are coming from the soul and not from the matrix. So, so these are, yeah. So I, I, I see what you're saying, and and maybe, maybe that's you know, maybe and, that is. And this, I think that, that, that goes into my my personal view of what we're doing here is kind of aligned with exactly that example. That, and I'm not trying to 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 say that you were incorrect in how you were viewing it, but but maybe that was how you were thinking. I was going to view it um, that way, in that. There's there's a there's a polarity that that affects all of us, right? And 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 I think the free will aspect of is we can explore whatever aspect of that polarity we wish. That's the free will. That you know we can go down the negative rabbit hole or the predetermined rabbit hole that says we are supposed to be doing this, but we're limited by this. In my aspect, my reframing of everything that I want in my life and that I've learned um, to seek you know, the, the truth and to surrender and to let go, those things affect me differently now than they used to. They affect me like when I hear something that or see something that affects my, one of my, one, you know, one of my senses, um, it, it is to, to, to you know, uh, acknowledge it with gratitude and to reframe it into the message that it's for me. Everything that I see, everything that I hear, everything I experience is for me to interpret that as a message of confirmation and, and of synchronicity. Uh, to teach me something and that's how yeah. i view everything yeah or i but, try to view everything but i but you see the the thing is sort of two things here going on which is one well yes the point is to deprogram yourself to 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 not go into the um whatever the limitations that you have in your chart trying to tell you that this is the this is what's going to happen to you and this is what's going to happen to you and 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 you know you have to keep proving this and you have to keep proving that so so yeah of course that you have to reframe and that you first have to be aware of and and just you know push against it not to do it so yeah when you're talking about reframing absolutely right but second of all you know the teaching aspect, I am like, everything is a teaching here. Why Why do you have to teach? We subscribe to that narrative that we have to learn, that th this is a school. We have to learn something here and everything is helping us to grow and learn. Well, this is a narrative that's false at the bottom because we, or a lot of people bought into this because we've been in Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is the lowest of the of, of all, the, all the, uh, the, the cycles, right? So in Kali Yuga, it is like in our our consciousness and grain that things need to happen through yeah, suffering right. but yeah. that's not true in golden age you grow and you reach highest highs through just through development you don't have to suffer you don't have to overcome anything you don't have to learn through um misery so so this is this is where i where i i, I disagree it comes to um the, the construct the construct wants you to think that there is some nobility in suffering and learning you need to be learning and well this is the lie that they sell you to believe that mm -hmm. th that this has point that your life is a never-ending lesson no it's not it doesn't have to be this is if you subscribe to it, then it will be. But overall, the point is to as quickly as possible realize the con context of this construct and not to subscribe to the fact that I have this trauma, I have that trauma. So now I'm going to have to work and overcome and ta da 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 because these are my traumas. Well, right. you know, and, and spend the next 20 years in therapy because of your traumas. Well, that's no. not. Exactly how no, how I, I I agree I, I I'm I'm that that wasn't what my context was I guess of, of that so um you know but uh the 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 overall this is going to be a great topic for when we talk because uh, this is this is part of the the other side of the coin for me um it's mm -hmm. not a disagreement it's just a way for me to kind of reframe I don't believe this this is a school I think it's possible I think anything is possible that you know it is what it is but for me. Um, the reason that I'm here is to experience what I choose to experience. 
and for me to overcome that and, and almost realize that we are all like Neos yeah, in the Matrix. Yeah, but how, how do you know that you choose to experience that? Because I'm trying to tell you, mm -hmm. look, how is it that we've been talking for almost two hours now? And no, yeah. And I don't know you. I don't know who you are. But the things mm -hmm. that I'm telling you, you're confirming that this is true. So oh yeah, it, it, it's how so on, you yeah. see so so you're mm -hmm. not really choosing what you want to experience. If I am able on based on some mathematical symbols tell you what you've been experiencing and what you choose to experience, then that's not your free will. Then we're not dealing with free will. No, no. What what I'm saying is, um, it, it's the only thing that I that that I've learned in the past. Well, the most important thing for myself that I've learned in the past few years is that. Um, the external surroundings uh, will happen to you. Things will happen, but the what what you are able to control is how you process of them. Yeah. Right. So so yeah. for me, for yeah. me, that's what I'm saying. I, I I refuse to refuse to believe in in the notion the notion of evil. I, I understand the morality of it. I'm, I'm not going to mm -hmm. you know sit here and say that the life is always great. But for me to self uh, actualize and to be aware that I control me. I control how I receive things and I, yeah. I can, you yeah. know, not everything that happens to you is going to be able to be reframed as a positive thing, yeah. but I've lost both of my parents. Um, you know, I, I've lost, um, you know, I, I've had a lot of struggles, but in, in, in looking back, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I wouldn't change anything um, because it's made me who I am. It's helped me realize that this, this, whatever we're doing here, this life is, is a reflection of what I am viewing it to be. Right. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I won't let any and no and no one can tell me that um, how I should feel right and that's my point is that no one should have the power over me or over anyone else to tell you um, that you should be sad or you should be angry or you should be mm -hmm. um, you, you know you're a victim at that point yeah. and I believe yeah. that that what's happened to me in my life has actually made me realize that um, the only victim mentality that I have is uh, believing that other things have power over me. And to realize my own power, and by mm -hmm. doing that, I've gone from a um, a very high A personality, um, you know, high you know tenacity for for being a high achiever, um, you know, those kind of things, perfectionist, and those were the things that I was going to be judged on, and those are the things that I would be 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 able to say to myself, I've done a good job, yes, I, I won, or I did this. In actuality, that that is part of the matrix and part of the game. But to overcome that is not only to, to realize that it's part of the game, but to overcome that is to realize that those things had power over me before and they no longer do. I, I'm not a victim mm -hmm. to anything. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I will experience whatever I choose to experience. Um, and I don't know how the reality works. Maybe I'm able to physically manifest these things um, out, of, out of my free will or out of my belief system. Um, but for me, I, I am... I am a non-player. I am definitely a player character in in this system, in that um, non-player characters to me have to see it to believe it. I only have to believe it, and I will see it. And and that for me is the creator, and that to me is 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 how I can overcome this matrix. And there's a lot of intricacies of what I've been talking about and what and, and what your belief systems are. And that's why it's going to be great to have the conversation, you know, in, in a week and a half or I think it's two weeks, um, yeah. you know, on the spring equinox <laughs> uh, <laughs> after. Uh, yeah. Because I, I want those things to, to, to rise with people to understand that, you know, the victim mentality is it, it needs to go away. And, and in order for you to actually get what you want out of this life or this incarnation, you have to be accepting of the things that you can change and cannot change. You cannot change what happens to you necessarily, but you can choose to believe that what's happening to you uh, is either going to teach you a lesson. And I don't mean suffering. I'm talking about mentally. Um, you know, there, there, there are things that you can experience that, that you can get better at. You know, you can. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it's a school. I think we're here to experience that. And, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to put anybody, you know, um, into the situation where I embrace the suffering. Um, you know, I don't want to suffer anymore, which is why I've changed my mentality. That's me hacking the system. I'm changing my mentality because yeah. I will no longer allow the system to force me to suffer. I'm not going to do it. Hmm.
No, of course. And that's that's the only place, right, where you can decide that okay I can control that. That's exactly that's I can control. exactly yes, right. And this is this is what the in the East or it doesn't even have to be the East, but this is when they talk about detachment and people doesn't don't understand what's a detachment. Yep. Well, detachment is around understanding that um do not identify with the outcome. Like right. do not 100%. go all the way into that victim mentality do not buy into whatever that's the matrix emotion. That's the ego trying to keep you around yes. exactly 100%. whatever no, emotion I, is being we sold definitely agree upon yeah. a lot of that i just you know in terms of what i've gone through and the things that i've seen uh that i still cannot believe and put into words and you know i i i've, I've decided that i would like to tell my story a little bit but in the end the um the the, the story of um, how it resonates with people is not up to me. I can't wake anyone up to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. these things, yeah. you know, and, yeah. that's, and I leave it at that, you know, yeah. in, in terms yeah. of how that is. Yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, let's have that discussion. I, I don't know the other guys, but uh, yeah. Let's 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 see how that's uh, sorry. Like... I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to move in that direction, but the written in the stars thing is for me, it's, it's fantastically synchronistic um, that I'm hearing nice. this because you know, I, and it just happened, you know, recently. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I, I just got five minutes left and then okay. I have to run cause I have another uh, consultation, no Sorry. but I just want to quickly, before we go, I just needed to give you uh, just a brief flavor for like, uh, what is the matrix going to try to plan for you? Okay. Okay. Yep. So 2023 this year now, um, numerologically it's your year nine out of nine so the end of a cycle of a nine-year cycle this is a year where a lot of things um it's a it's a kind of good year for payout as in things that you have been doing or working on this year is the time to kind of for some things to happen so it's almost like i don't like to use the word karma because there is no karma but the matrix pushes that onto us so this is the time of literally when something is owed to you it will happen and if if something is you know shouldn't be here it will be taken away um not a good not a good year to start new things as in something that's meant to last for a for a long time new relationships marriages etc not a good year for that however if there is something that you were working on in the previous years and this year is more like just a culmination or something then it can then it can happen it's okay it's also a good year to kind of tie up loose ends from the past but from next year 2024 it's when you step it into that year number one. So the beginning of a new cycle, it's a new energy. It's a very kind of, uh, it's a startup type of energy. So so starting something new, you know, new, totally new energy coming in. Um, there will be also that element of having probably a bit more energy to just push for something, something new. So you are, you're literally one leg between the old and the new. And um in terms of the transits just very quickly wanted to uh have a look here and i left it on 2024 let me change that quickly let's go back to march 23 yeah so the green ones are the moving planets so the, these are the transits up in the air and here in black we have your natal position it's slightly different chart but it's still the same as you saw the whole time so um about june time this year um you are going to enter into a transit uh, between this saturn and your natal moon position you see it's going to be a square a square is a bit of a challenge because of the way the planets move so i'm only looking at the slow moving planets because they are the most important they have the most to to say here and all of them are obviously moving forward then they are moving in retrograde and again forward and the fact that they move very slowly extends these transits into many many months so around june you're gonna start this transit which ultimately will be over in february so it is like, I don't know, eight months. What is this transit? It is a time, it will be a time you will feel it in the air of 
introspection, self-examination, um, some traumas may come up, some emotions that are still maybe you're not sure about, things can come up. And mind you, it always will pick some circumstances for that. It is not that you're just going to wake up one day and going to start probably crying in a, in a corner just because you have the transit. It will be circumstances driven, whether somebody will show up or something will happen that will lead you to um, these kind of um, feelings. The moon represents also women. So whether that will be something to do with the mother or with some significant woman, women in your life. Um, it seems Saturn brings circumstances a bit out of control, but something that needs to be a bit put in its place. So if there is anything that maybe things have not been, you've been not honest with yourself about, or maybe things have been brushed under the carpet, this is a time when Saturn will pull them out. Pull it out. So might be a bit uncomfortable certain things might have to be faced and overcome so just so you know it's kind of around mid-year this year there will be obviously time of culminations and when this energy will let go so it's not like it's going to be eight months of intensity no but the first time you're gonna feel it around um june july then it's then saturn will come retrograde so sort of over summer you might feel it again then it will be okay then it will be um that aspect will uh stop being so intense but then at the end of it um around february 2024 saturn will make the last um uh, contact and it will continue to move so that will be the last time you will kind of feel it more intense um second thing very important is this pluto you see you have your ascendant here six degrees 27 and pluto is sitting here at five sort of five pluto is the slowest moving so it is and of course you have your ascendant here on the other side you have descendant descendant um, uh, represents the other person in your life could be the partner or could be someone else could be the wife could be some other significant person that shows up or that already is there Pluto represents transformation big changes um, death doesn't mean physical death but death of something um, transformation of something so this transit and um, you might feel a little bit of it a little flavor around may time this year however it's not going to make a full aspect so you may or may not feel it i'm just highlighting because it is a significant one this is once in a lifetime this is once in a lifetime however really really it is going to come back um for you around february next year and then it's gonna go on for a year so um personal relationships go through transformation at that uh, in that time there could be some pressures showing up some unconscious pressures something from the past or something from like literally deep in your psyche um causing arguments maybe the other person it doesn't have to be you but it is in your chart you will experience it um this can also this transit also could end some relationships it could bring someone into your life um, through some transformational events or someone who will be transformational in one way or another. The important thing is that this happens once in your lifetime. There is no way you're not going to feel it. It is something that you will feel it because it's it's a once in a lifetime. Um, but just be prepared, you know, just be extra cautious with your relationship and with with kind of what's going on so that things don't spiral out of control but these are major major energies so it's it's kind of quite difficult to you know to 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 um, fight with those energies so so if there is something that again doesn't work doesn't serve anymore something like that it will be challenged and so do you sorry i'm sorry go ahead yeah, go ahead. Uh, do you feel these energies are part of the matrix or they're in my chart that I have to, that they're in, in my incarnation experience? 
Well, they they are, you know, this whole idea that why, <laughs> why do we have to even experience those tribulations, right? That is coming from, in a way, that is coming from the matrix. But overall, it is going to be hitting those points in which the matrix caught you, as in... Mm -hmm. This is the limitation. This is the limitation. Let's try him on that. Let's see how gotcha. he's doing here. So it is going to try to shake your world. But ultimately, you see, people who are much more aware, people who are not holding on desperately to something that's not healthy for them, um, they tend to have a, a easier time through those things. So practice what you do, which is literally, I control how I respond. But that doesn't stop the fact that something will happen. They're going to try. Yeah. And they're going to try. Mm -hmm. They're going to try. Um, the good news here, and this is something that I have to um, mention. You see, this is Rahu. This is to do with that purpose of your incarnation. All the planets are moving this way, but Rahu is moving the other way. This is just how it works. I'm not going to go into technicalities, which means Rahu is now here. But around October, November time, because Rahu is moving here, and Rahu does not do this backward forward. It's just constantly moving. So that's also okay. So Rahu is moving, moving, moving. And around October, November this year, Rahu will be over your Jupiter. What does it mean? It is going to be an amazing opportunity to expand beyond your any previous um, limitations, whether that be job wise. And I would say it is going to be job wise, but also in terms of your beliefs and how you present yourself, how you see yourself. It's a time to reinvent yourself. You might be adopting a new belief system or a new path. You might be making a breakthrough in something that you will discover, connect some dots, which will be very significant for the teachings and the, the wisdom, the knowledge that you will be able to share later. It will be a time where you will get a chance to fulfill your purpose as a leader, as a teacher. But I wouldn't say in that kind of matrixy, you know, job I would say more in that deeper calling that you have. That's what we're going for. Could be some breakthroughs in sacred knowledge, something you, you discover. Could be travel, could be moving as well. But everything in relation to that purpose. Um, uh, your influence, your status, your um, the way the way you show up um, for people, but also what you mean, that will also expand. So there will be some element of having a greater impact. Uh, and soon after that, about February 2024, that Rahu will continue to move here and will cross your midheaven. Major thing. This is your time to shine. So things will be building up, okay? And with that Jupiter here, that first contact, things will be building up to this grand finale. So this is why I said to you, and that beautifully ties with the fact that next year will be your year number one. I can see you taking a new direction with your career, with what you want to ultimately do here. I would say that, I, I'm not saying that you will leave the business that you are currently in or whatever you're earning your major money from, but I would say that there is a big chance that you will transition into something else or that that calling, that that that's something that you really want to do, do not waste that chance. It has here next year, end of this year, next year, it has a chance to be taken to a whole new level. And mm -hmm. mind you, this transit happens once every 19 years so this is it okay this is that window of opportunity to <laughs> take it 90? 19 19 years okay so so i mean you know let's face it right if not now when you are 47 then what in 19 years you want to wait until you are 60 something don't want to wait for that right then i'll do another one I'll, I'll, then, then I'll, you will I'll do another one but but you know you want to seize this opportunity this is because Rahu is a good energy. So here is going to be a chance for to become much more visible, uh, much more influential, um, literally even financial success here. So 
be prepared. This is why I'm saying this year is is um you I know it, yeah yeah but that but be prepared. Remember the date is February 2024. However, it, these are slow transits, and also it all depends exactly how accurate the time of birth is. So we need to be prepared three months before and three months after. So a six months window around from December, November this year until May next year, big impact time. Hmm. If okay. there is, you know, if there is something that comes your way that you're kind of thinking, mm, 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 do it. If, you know, if you're not sure, do it. It is, it will be, it will be, it doesn't help. I have three things actually. Okay, what <laughs> are I'm they? I'm having to decide. I'm I'm having to decide on those three things. So, what are they? Um. So, uh, I know you have to go. I apologize. Um. If you need to go, it's it's okay. We can we can pick up another time, or or I can email you whatever if you have questions. Um. So, uh, a year and a half ago, I sold the trademark for my own business. So, 2014, which was my year one, the last time actually was 100 percent accurate, and this year is my year nine which uh, my my last payout for that trademark sale is coming this year. So it's 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 over um, in six more months. Um, right now, I'm not doing much. I'm still doing my, my personal business thing that I was doing before, which was commerce, uh, wholesale uh, distribution of like some electronic cigarettes, eh, baloney yeah. stuff. But anyway, um, so I'm choosing, I'm probably choosing between a wellness, uh, a wellness center uh, partner, partnership with uh, like uh, infrared sauna, red light therapy, cryotherapy, um, float tank uh, therapy, those kind of things, um, wellness, or um, I have two other franchises that I actually have one interview for today. Uh, it is for a, la um, la a non-medical laboratory, um, like uh, DNA testing, drug testing, alcohol testing. It's called Fastest Labs. Um, so it's a business to business lab testing for um, that. And then I have another one that I'm interested in. It's a, um, it's a dog washing franchise, like a re retail franchise. Um, in my area, it's growing very big. So, okay. So, so the stuff that we're talking about today, the stuff that I'm talking about this major impact, you're going to ask yourself, which, if any of these initiatives is making a big impact onto humanity? None of them, <laughs> none of them, in my, in my opinion, none of them. I mean, you know, uh, that's what I'm telling you. You yeah. are either operating at the matrix level or you're operating mm. um, at that level of where your that you know soul is trying to take you. And if you listen to it again, you will see that most of the things that we were talking about are around impact onto the collective, doing something for the humanity. I don't know if uh, some infrared light or whatever is that is that, you know, serving the humanity? Mm, well, in a in a way, yes, but it's not really like, you know, stealing ab ambrosia from the gods, right? right, <laughs> so, right. Yeah, no. so we're looking for ambrosia from the gods. Think about that. Uh, you're, and you're maybe this is why I'm saying me. this Are you is sure why... you're not part of the matrix. You're trying to put more pressure on me. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm trying to tell you that this is your year nine. Yeah. And I'm trying to tell you that it is not going to be this year that major, major, or it's not going to be tomorrow that major things mm -hmm. are going to happen. They're going to happen mm -hmm. December through to March, April, whatever, that window. So maybe you don't even see that yet. Maybe you don't even feel that yet. I no, but I'm looking. So maybe it'll, maybe, maybe, maybe one of these is, isn't the one as I go through and, and be honest with myself. Mm hmm. I think I think you need to be thinking of where is that impact on humanity? Where is that mm. service on humanity? Where is the ambrosia stolen by Tantalis from the gods for the humanity? Where is that? Is that in the in the dog watching? Is that in the lamps? Is that in any of them? Or is it more into, for example, the channel that you're doing? I'm not saying that that is going to be the right. channel. I'm just saying that think about the service for humanity where you are a leader of some sort bringing some new quality to advance the 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 the, the level of you know at which humanity operates on where is that okay. i'm thinking thinking i mean i have i have uh had some very big ideas before so maybe uh, i need to at least pursue them before i decide to do anything or or you know Look at them.
Yeah. I would, I would, yeah, I would say so. All right. Well, I'll go look for the nectar right now and see where I should find it. <laughs> Let me stop sharing. Here you go. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, no worries. If you, if you can send me that so I can review it and yeah. um, and and see what 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 else resonates with me while I'm meditating or you know by myself. Sure, sure, we'll do that. I will do that later tonight, okay? Because I have yeah, to no run problem. into yes, a, into absolutely. a consultation now. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate no it. No worries. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Speak, speak later. Bye.